All right, so chapter 6.4, solutions to linear systems using matrices, okay? Um, so those are objectives. So an augmented matrix. So this is an augmented matrix. Basically, the first equation goes in the first row, the second equation goes in the second row, and the third equation goes in the third row. You are eliminating the variables out of the situation, but you're keeping uh, the coefficients and the constants, okay? The dashed line is there for some people, not everyone puts the dashed line, but this is how you take your system and turn it into a matrix. You remove the variables and your constant is isolated, okay? When you're describing a matrix, you're talking about the dimensions of it. Um, and so, the dimensions are based off row by column. How many rows, how many columns? So this right here used to be a linear system. Not a linear system. Um, a three variable system, you can think of it in that way, uh, if it was. And so here, it now became two by four columns. So it's a two by four matrix. Okay, so just being able to write it write it as an augmented matrix is pretty pretty simple step one is you want to make sure your variables um your terms with variables are on one side in an alphabetical order and then your constants are by themselves and then you literally just write only the coefficients and constants and there's your variable your matrix we'll call this matrix a Okay, when you call, when you name a matrix, it is with a capital letter. So B, when a term is missing, you replace it with a zero. When a coefficient is missing, you replace it with a one. Because it's really not missing, it's just Casper friendly one. All right, and then so we have two, three, negative one, zero. 0, 3, 1, negative 1. Negative 1, 2, 1, negative 4. And that would be your augmented matrix. Any questions about creating the matrix? Awesome. Now, being able to go backwards, um, just labeling x, y, z. And so therefore, if I have x, y, z, the first of my system, it's going to be x minus 2y plus 4z equals 7. Then I'm going to have, I have 2x but no y and a z. So I have 2x plus 5z equals negative 2. And then I have 3x minus 6y plus 8z equals negative 1. And that would be the system. Okay, the system for this one. That got ugly ish. Um, I have again x, y, z. So 1x plus 3y plus 6z equals 1. 1y minus 2z equals 3. And z equals negative 9. Okay, this is a special matrix. Um, it's actually called row echelon. I'm spelling that all kinds of wrong, probably. Row echelon form. And that's because you have the matrix is, has been simplified down to the three zeros and the ones across the diagonal. And what's beautiful about row echelon form is that if you've done the work to get into row echelon form, that means you've already isolated one variable. So notice here, Z is already isolated. So because I know the value of Z, I can take that value and substitute in here to find the value of Y. And then once I have Z and Y, I can take that, those values and substitute in here and find the value of X. And that's how row echelon form works. Okay, so. Practicing using row echelon form. So if it's already given to you in row echelon form, um, again, you have your ones on your diagonal, 
you have your your other variables have already got. So this lets you know x, y, z. So I already know that z equals negative 5. And because I know that, I can go from there. I know z equals negative 5, and I have y minus 4z equals 30. And then my very top is x plus 2y plus z equals 16. So I'm going to use this information to solve for the next. So I'm going to take z and substitute it in here to find y. So I have y minus 4 times negative 5 equals 30. So y plus 20 equals 30 minus 20. So y equals 10. So now I have my z and my y. So I'm going to take z and y and plug it in and solve for x. So we have x plus 2 times 10 plus negative 5 equals 16. So we have x plus 20 minus 5 equals 16. x plus 15 equals 16 minus 15. So x equals 1. So I have my x, my y, and my z. So my solution is 1 comma 10 comma negative 5. Okay, so this is what happens when you're already again in row echelon form. And how do I know in row echelon? I have my three zeros and my ones on the diagonal. Now, are they going to all make sure she's going to be given to you like this? No. You have to put it in row echelon form at times. Okay. Um, here's another example. If we need it, do we need to see row echelon form worked out again? Or are we feeling pretty okay about it? Feeling okay. Okay. Thank you, Zario. All right. So again, what is it called? Row echelon form. Why is it called row echelon? The three ones on the diagonal, three zeros in the bottom left corner. Got it? Now, remember I said that they may not always be given to you that way? Well, there is a video that I would like for you to watch um, on your own. I don't think I put it in today, but hold on really quick. Uh, maybe I did. Okay, so um, this is a, it's a, pretty long video, but um, I'm going to have you go back. You can watch it on your own. It's in the notes on your Brightspace. You can just click on the link and it'll bring you here. But basically, um, he's going through and going through the exact steps we're about to go through to go from a system to a matrix and then to take our augmented matrix into row echelon form. But it's a video that goes, that's pretty good goes a little slower and um, yeah so hopefully you appreciate it and you go from there but I wanted y'all to see the beginning of it and so in the beginning uh, let me make it bigger so in the beginning all he did was all, all you do is you write it into its matrix so we wrote it into its matrix now with matrices they have their own set of rules to follow uh, you just like when you were doing the elimination method it's kind of like like that for the most part but you are doing it a row at a time so notice here how I already have my one that I need I don't need to change that um I do need to change that negative one in the bottom left and the two so those are my goals are to manipulate those two things and you can manipulate your matrices by adding, by multiplying, by subtracting, um, basically this addition and multiplication because when you're dividing, that's multiplying by a fraction, 
when you're subtracting that's adding a negative. So through use of multiplication and addition, you can transform into row echelon form. So the first thing we're gonna see here is that if I add row one to row three, that will help me transform that one into a zero, which is what my goal is. So I need to transform. So I'm gonna add row one plus row three. Okay, when you're adding, the other two rows are gonna stay the same. They're not gonna change, they're going to stay the same. I do not draw the line, because that line gets on my nerves, um, but you can draw the line if you need it. Is there supposed to be an example on the screen? Right. Oh, do y'all not, oh shoot. Yes, there is. Do you see it now? Yeah, we can see it now. Oh my gosh. All right, so once you're in the matrix, now you're going to uh, try to transform, remember how we need the three zeros in the bottom left and then the three ones on the diagonal. So I'm gonna add row one to row three and that's gonna become my new row three. So you make a plan. So that's your plan. When you make a plan, just notice that it's only one row that's changing, that is row three. And so that means row one and row two are gonna stay the same. Come on, Patrick, write faster. So uh, one plus negative one is gonna become zero, which is what I wanted. One plus zero becomes one. Negative one, negative two becomes negative three. And then nine and two make 11. Okay, now I gotta focus on turning that one into a zero. And then turning that three into a one. So I still have a couple more steps to go. So how can I turn that one into a zero? Well, I can combine it with, um, if I multiply, row two by negative one and then add it to row three, I can transform that into a zero. So I write my plan of what I'm gonna do. Multiply by negative one, row two, and then I'm gonna add it to row three and that's gonna be my new row three. Now again, I'm only changing row three because that's the one, that's the final product. I'm using row two, but I'm not going to change row two. So negative one times one is negative one plus one. It's gonna give me zero. And then I have negative one times three. That gives me negative three plus negative three gives me negative six. And then negative one times three gives me negative three plus 11 gives me eight. And so now I have my three zeros. Now I'm on to getting my ones. So I need my three ones on the diagonal. So how can I get my three ones on the diagonal? Well, um, I have the choice to multiply. Well, multiply um, by a fraction, which is just dividing by negative six. And the reason why I want to only affect that is because if I do anything to the other rows, um, it's a little more work to myself. But if I don't want to work with a fraction, then I can go a different route. So like if you didn't want to work with a fraction, but then you'll be stuck with getting another non-zero. And so sometimes it's just better to suck it up and work with a fraction. So when you have eight over negative six, that is a negative four thirds which isn't a terrible fraction. And now you are in row echelon form. And because you're in row echelon form, you now know the value of your Z 
And because you know the value of your Z, you can then find the value of your Y, which means you can then find the value of your X and your Y, and your X. So you write it back as a system. And Z equals negative four thirds. And now you're just a game of substitution. So I'm gonna substitute Z in and solve for Y. And look, my threes, they're gonna cancel out. Because again, fractions are our friends, not our enemies. So we're left with y minus four equals three. So y equals seven. So I have Z, I have Y. And now I can take these two and plug it in to solve for X. So X plus seven minus four thirds equals nine. And how you choose to work the fraction is totally up to you. Um, if, if, it, if you're intimidated by it, you can multiply everything by three. Um, if you're comfortable finding common denominators, find common denominators. But either way, fractions are our friends. So it's not terrible. So we have 3x plus 21 plus 4 equals 27. And now we're gonna combine like terms. So we have 25. When we subtract 25, we're left with three X equals two. And then you divide three. And so X equals two thirds. So now we can write our solution. And our solution is two thirds, seven, and negative four thirds. And it's done. Now, so that's how you work the problem. So it's like a, it's basically a puzzle uh, is our goal. And so I think we should try one and then we'll go into how to do it in the calculator. I know you're also ready to know that. Um, so here I'm going to write it as the matrix. So my matrix is, I actually like doing these. It's like, it really is soothing to me, um, which is probably why I still want to do it, even though I was like, I'm not going to do it. We're going to watch the guy do it and I'm going to walk you through it. Um, but it's very soothing. It's like a, hmm. What piece goes here? What's the fastest way? What's the least amount of steps I can solve this in? Uh, okay, so we are in a good position. And the reason why we're in a good position is because if you look on my diagonal, I have my ones, right? So the only things I really gotta try to get, up, get rid of are my, this guy and this guy. So I'm gonna have to play a little row manipulation to get there. So, if I need to transform, excuse me, this one into a zero, what would you suggest me to do? Anybody? Everybody? Multiply by negative and add. Okay, multiply which one? Row one or row two? I don't exactly. Know. So it really does it it does not matter actually. So um remember your row one, your row two, your row three. 
So I need to transform this into a zero. So I could multiply row two by negative one and then add, right? So we let that be our first row. Row two times negative one plus row three is gonna be my new row three, okay? I'm only changing row three. So rows one and two are going to stay the same. Okay, so row two, I have negative two times negative one is positive two. And what happens when I do that? Well, positive two plus zero is gonna become, oh man, there goes my zero. Is that positive two plus zero gonna become two? And then now I have one, negative one times one, that's going to give me a zero here. Okay, okay. And then we have, where are we at? Uh, negative one times one, negative one, negative one plus one. That gives me zero. And then uh, negative three plus nine gives me six. Okay, so when this happens, uh, this lets you know that you're kind of already finding your x, because technically I could divide by two and know what x is. Uh, so you have the choice to keep going, think you can go a little, uh, do something different, but we're here now, so what would be the next move you would make? And again, there's no right or wrong move. So I'm just, it may just take you a little bit longer and take you around the whole mulberry bush. There is no absolute right way. Now, is there a shorter way versus a longer way? Yes. What would you do next? Oh. I'm stuck. You just try. You, like literally, it's a it's a it's a logic puzzle. Um, what can I try next? What can I eliminate next? It doesn't again, it's it's a chance to just try things out. Um, I've done matrices where I've taken multiple pages. Uh, multiply row one by two, and then I mean, yeah, then add it to row two. Okay. So we're going to multiply row one by two, add it to row two, and it's going to become our new row two. Okay. So I'm leaving row one as one, one, negative one, two. And two times negative, two times one is um, two plus negative two is zero. Then we have two times one is two, um, plus one is three. Then we have two times negative one, that's negative two, plus one is negative one. And then two times two is four, four plus three is seven, two, zero, zero, six. Next move. Again, guys. Um, you, it's it's again. You're not right wrong. Hold on, please. I just. Are we trying to get this to echelon? So, from here already, where I'm at.
I can easily see what x equals, right? Can we see that? That x equals 3. No, maybe so. No one sees that? Yes, I see it. Okay. It's like, do we see it? And the reason why I know x equals 3 is 1, 0, 0, 3 means that this is my x, y, z, and I know that it's equal to my constant. So we know x equals 3. And at this point, you just have to figure out or decide what else do you want to eliminate. So if I multiplied um, row, oh, I'm sorry. You also can switch rows around. So let's say I wanted to switch row one and row three, or um, I could switch row one and row three, and it can work as well. So I'm going to do row one and row three are switching. And so when they switch, I now have one, zero, zero, three, zero, three, negative one, seven, one, one, negative one, two. So there's a lot of things you can do with matrices that won't change their value. It reminds me of the Rubik's Cube. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's literally a logic puzzle of its own. <laughs> and it all depends on how you start. So like, we start with um, Zario telling us to multiply row two by negative one and then adding it to row three. Well, what if I start off with uh, multiplying row one by two and then adding it to row two? Um, everything would have been different. Does that make sense? how you go is going to decide and determine where you're going for the rest of the, the process. I think the shortest of this one probably would be, I think it's probably like a six, a six step one. And we've done four steps. I think it's probably like a six step transformation. Okay, when this happens right here, the double zero at the top, this is called a, um, a special, a reduced row echelon form. And when that happens for the reduced row echelon form, your goal becomes to get all ones here and get everything else equal to zero. So when this happens, my goal is to get all ones here and then get everything else equal to zero. So if I want to get everything else equal to zero, what would I need to do? So I need to turn three into a zero. Well, that means I'm going to have to use my new row three. So if I multiply row three by negative one, what will happen? Or if I need to change this negative one into a zero, I can multiply this by negative one, what will happen? And so it just keeps going. It literally, there's no no right or wrong way to conclude this. Um, so let's try, I'm running out of room. I'm going to erase something at some point. Uh, let's do row, row two. Mm, plus, negative one times row three. Let's see what happens. And that's gonna make my new, that is not an R. My new row two. Okay, so uh, again, row one is not changed. I prefer to do this on paper 100%. When I teach it in class, I usually um, do it on paper. So we have row two, so we're gonna multiply row three by negative one. 
negative one plus zero is going to give us negative one. And then negative one plus three gives us negative two. One plus negative one gives us zero. Negative two plus seven gives us five. So we have three zeros there. Now we gotta get the negative three. one plus three gives you negative two. What I write? Uh, what you mean, positive two, right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So now we have. Um, We have one zero zero three, negative one two zero five one one negative two, and we can just keep going. Or at this point, you can see well, I can turn this back into a system, and I have x. I can solve for y, and then I can plug everything in and solve for z. So it's when you feel comfortable and you feel like you've reached somewhere where your values make sense, where you can plug in and evaluate, then you can stop. Um, Yes. And I'm going to show you how you know when you can stop. Okay. So notice here how I know the value of X. So when I write my system, I have x equals 3, I have negative x plus 2y equals 5, and I have x plus y minus z equals 2. So even though it's reversed, do I still have enough where I can plug in and solve and use substitution? I do, thank you for answering. I can plug in three here, solve for x, so that gives me negative three plus two y equals five. Add three, I get two y equals eight. Divide two, I get y equals four. So I now have x equals three, I have y equals four, which means that I have enough to plug in and solve for z. So I have three plus four minus z equals two. That gives me seven minus Z equals two. Ugly two, but you get it. And this gives me negative Z equals negative five. So Z equals five. So I have three, four, and five. Well, the answer will always be the same, right? Hmm? The answer will always be the same? Yes, no everyone's answer do. will be the same, no matter what route you go. But it's, as soon as you get to a point in your matrix where you feel like you can use backward substitution, then you can go for it. Um, I saw, I was like, well, I could keep going, or I'm like, oh, I have an X value, I isolate it, I got rid of OZ, I can plug in, and now I can solve. Now, is this true Gaussian elimination all the way through? No, it is not. Uh, with Gaussian elimination, your goal is to use the matrix in total to solve the problem. But I, once I learned that I didn't have to do that as a student, I was like, I'm just going to get through it as much as I need to, and then resort back to substitution. Okay, um, this is just another one to practice. Now we're gonna go through doing it in the calculator. Um, I'm gonna let you write down these steps at, on your own, but I'm gonna model it and here we go. So this is our calculator example. 
if you have your TI-83 available, um, follow along. Let me open my calculator and share. Can you all see my calculator? Oops. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is create a matrix. So to create a matrix, you're going to hit second, x to the negative 1, and that opens up your matrix menu. You're going to go over to edit, and we're going to input the matrix. So remember, this is a 3 by 4 matrix, 3 rows, 4 columns. I'm going to put in my values, so my coefficient for 1, Hit enter, and it'll take you over to the next one. Three, four, eight, and then I had negative two, negative one, two, negative one, and then one, eight, 14, and nine. Okay, so after you input it, you're gonna go back to second matrix. And you'll know that it's saved because it has matrix A is three by four. All right, and then you're gonna go over to math. And you're gonna scroll down till you see REF. That's our reduced echelon form. You're gonna click on that. Uh-oh, I didn't quit, I'm sorry. Second, quit. Second, matrix, math. Scroll down, REF. It's gonna ask you what matrix you're gonna to go to. You're gonna go back to your matrix window, second, matrix. I'm gonna be using matrix A, because that's the one I've built. Hit A. You can close the parentheses if you want, but you don't have to. And then hit enter. And it completes the, the row echelon form for you. To get fraction, um, you're gonna have to second, enter. That's just second entry, it repeats what you wrote. And you would hit math, and you see where it says frac, frac. you hit fraction, and then hit enter and it'll give you the fraction values. So that is your reduced echelon form. How do we do the fraction part? Okay. So the fraction part, if you've already hit enter, you just hit second, enter, and it puts it back what you have. And then you go to math, you see what it says prop. And then you hit enter and it'll put it in fractions for you. Okay. Okay. So now if the problem's asking for your row echelon form, you have your row echelon form. Um, go back. So, in row echelon form, our matrix was, what is it? One, one half, negative one, one half. Then we had zero, one, two, 17 fifteenths. And then we had zero, zero, one, one. Is that right? Zero. Oh, I'm gone. Or all zeros in. 
Was it that? Yeah, that's my calculator here. Okay. So when this happens, because we have um, the zeros, all three zeros in the bottom row, that means that we have infinite solutions. Because Z can be anything. Um, uh oh. All right, so when we got here, this means that our Z has no value. It's gonna be no solution for this linear system, um, for this three variable system. They're going to not meet anywhere, and, and so it would be no solution. Now, these are all the different types of solutions that you can get. Uh-oh. So first, if you have, this is just a two variable system, so X and Y in a constant. If you get three zeros, so if it's zeros in the last row, that means that you are going to have um, infinite solutions, infinitely many solutions, okay? If it's all three zeros in the last row, infinitely many solutions. Here, when you have only zero, zero, one, that means you have one solution. And this is an example of reduced row echelon form, which means that you don't have to do any substitution because you completely use matrix elimination to get all of the um, what are the elements, the other six of the elements down to zero. Okay, and so again, this is called reduced row echelon form. And therefore, your answers are, your solution is the constant column. When this happens, so I have all three zeros, which means that I'm just going to have infinitely many solutions. And everything is based off of what Z can be. And so here, when this happens, it's not true, zero does not equal negative two, so there is no solution. And that's what ours came down to, it was zero equals two, one, and that's not a true statement, so therefore, it's no solution. And yeah, so in the calculator, you can do reduce row echelon form. You don't have to just do row echelon. You actually can do reduce row echelon. Right. And it's the exact same steps, except you go down one more. So we're going to quickly go through that. And I think that's all that's left. Yeah. Um, thank you for hanging around. But here we go. So here we go. I'm going to open the calculator. I'm going to clear what I've been working. So I'm going to hit second. Plus, and I'm going to reset on, I just like to start off fresh. So I'm going to go second. I'm going to put in a new matrix. So edit. It is a three by four. Put in my variables. I have one, my coefficients, one, negative one, negative two. Negative one, negative two, one, two, zero, one, one, one. So I've put in all my coefficients in constant. I'm going to hit second quit. It takes me back to my calculator page. I'm going to press second at x to the negative one. I'm going to go to math. I'm going to scroll down. You actually can scroll up, it's a lot faster. And instead of clicking REF, that's just row echelon form. I'm going to click RREF, and that stands for reduce row echelon form. 
click on RREF, go to second matrix. I want the matrix that I created, which is matrix one. Going to hit enter. And it goes doo -doo 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 -doo. and it completely does all the math. And therefore the last column is my solution. So my solution would be negative one, zero, and one. And so, solution set here is negative one, zero, and one. Questions about reduced row echelon form? No questions? I didn't realize I skipped that one. I think they're the same though. Yeah, they're the same problem. I thought so. Um, anything else? Because that's it.